Much thanks to Lien and Sakina and warm welcome to the viewers. Well, today I am joined by Professor Francois Engelbrecht from the CSIR. And today we'll be talking about climate change and the recent events that have been happening in Europe. And if maybe we can have something similar here in South Africa so we can start preparing ourselves. So, Francois, welcome. Morning, Asmi. Morning. Uh, now, the temperatures that we have seen recently in Europe, uh, like 47 going to... Spain, uh, 47 in Italy as well. Those temperatures are way extreme, even for the Sahara Desert. So looking at those temperatures, I mean, everybody's frightened recently. And what they have resulted to, felt fires. So what really caused those temperatures to be so high? And why are these um, um, current temperatures being so extreme? Actually, what we are seeing here is climate change taking place in front of our eyes. So this is one of the most extreme seasons in terms of heat waves and wildfires that we've ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm. Um, you've also mentioned Africa, the highest temperature ever recorded in Africa and Algeria, 51 degrees Celsius, sure. early in July. July this year. July this year. Mm. Um, I mean, the European heat wave, the, yes. the, the, <coughs> the terrible fires in Greece, yeah. the yeah. largest fires in recorded history in California and in, in the United States. The Japan heat wave that followed on widespread flooding. Mm, mm. Uh, 90 people dead in Greece in the fire. I think more than 100 people died in Japan in the extreme events, specifically in the flooding. Yeah. So it's a, it's, an, it's a season of extreme weather across the northern hemisphere. And it's, of course, summer there now. Okay. And, uh, I mean, one of the big questions is, of course, what will happen in our, su in our summer um, a bit later in this year. So now looking at, at climate change on its own, it's, it's not like an event or a northern hemisphere event. It's a global event. Now, it brings fear to us, South Africans. Can we have similar conditions? I mean, last year we have extreme fires in Neisna. So are we looking at events that we're going to have similar conditions in South Africa again with the coming summer? Or is it going to be even more extreme than what we have experienced last year? Yes, we are also highly vulnerable to the impacts of global warming and climate change in our country and mm -hmm. on our continent. So as we move deeper into the 21st century, we can most certainly expect drastically rising temperatures in our region. And we can also expect a more frequent occurrence of extreme events, including heat waves and mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. droughts. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in terms of this current season, we should take note of the fact that an El Nino event is gradually building up now in the Pacific Ocean. And most international forecast centers are indicating that during this upcoming summer, this will be an El Nino event of moderate strength. Now, such events are typically associated with, with below normal rainfall over mm. South Africa, over mm. the summer rainfall region, mm. and also quite often with extreme heat or, or at least uh, above normally warm season and possibly also a high frequency of heat waves. Uh, let me remind our viewers of the 2015-16 summer. That was the warmest summer ever recorded in South Africa. Mm. And that was, uh, of course, associated with a very strong El Nino event. Now, lo lo looking at the coming El Nino, and, then, um, and we know that it is going to be dry, and then warm temperatures again for South Africa. Is, how strong is it? And is it really, uh, can we say now, like, definitely it is going to happen? Or are we still in the boundaries where it might not happen? And can, can we do something to, to, to start planning the future? What can we do to try and avoid such extreme events? The chance is, is very, very good that we are going to see a moderate El Nino event this season. Mm. Um, the chances that it will be dry over our region are a little bit less. We have seen some exceptions in the past when the El Nino event was actually associated with rainfall that was almost normal. But the majority of these events are bringing low, below normal rainfall to our region and the current forecasts are for below normal rainfall. Mm -hmm. So that's what we should prepare for. So the responsible thing for our agricultural sector and our water managers in terms of this upcoming summer, is to prepare for the possibility of temperatures being higher than they are usually and also for rainfall to be lower than, it, than what it usually is. Okay, now uh, my main question is with the Western Cape because we have seen that they have received below normal rainfalls again and then they have 
the biggest dam in the Western Cape is still less than 50% full. And the, the rainfall season over the Western Cape, it's almost over. Now, coming to the coming season, and also looking at the fact that we have an El Nino coming in, and then looking at this graphic again, which shows that the rainfall has been reducing since whenever, and going to the future will keep getting less and less rainfall. What are the chances of Western Cape to, like, you know, forget the issues of water, and they can just use water anyhow? Yes, I think this is a critical question for South Africa right now. I mean, the past winter brought almost normal rain to our traditional winter rainfall region. But further to the east, between more or less Mossel Bay in the west and East London in the east, it has been a terribly dry autumn and winter. Um, in Port Elizabeth, we are also now, of course, facing a water crisis. And the rainfall this past autumn in the Port Elizabeth region, and I think the, the figures will, say, will show something similar for the winter, was that it was one of our driest winters in several decades, at least in the last 40 years, mm. uh, the driest autumns. Now, there's a good rainfall event right now taking place along the East Coast, as, as you know. Yeah. But I don't think that will, that will break these conditions of drought. So to answer your question deep into the future, it's not looking good for our winter rainfall region and the Cape South Coast because one of the telltale signals of global warming is that the frontal systems that bring rainfall to these regions in winter are progressively being displaced southwards towards the South Pole. Yeah. So our, our ability to receive rainfall from, from frontal systems are becoming less and less as a consequence of global warming. Wow, that doesn't sound very good. And uh, yeah, we've had it here on Morning Live. The coming season, we have a moderate El Nino, so things are not looking good. But we'll do get some rainfall. And that is all from us right here. Ndawiendo.